Hey, what's up? Thanks so much for tuning in to the I'm Just Bougie channel, where we just kiki about life, politics. We just kick it. Um, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at OG underscore Shook Avery. <laughs> now let's get into this content. All right, so I wanted to have a discussion and I decided, okay, you know, as we're having like these honest discussions nowadays and we're just being completely honest about our feelings, and I don't feel like I speak for all the black people. I can All I can do is speak for the people I've encountered or what my personal experiences and share it, right? So I decided, mm, as we're covering police brutality, which includes, well, it's systematic racism, and which affects and includes police brutality, but it also includes the microaggressions and the things that we experience in the workplace or just in places that we're, 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 we're in the minority, right? So what we experience. So one of the things that I feel like is never talked about, or it is talked about, but in a, we laugh on, on, on our end as black people. We'd be like, they just cooning in that Uncle Tom. Like we do say that about certain black people, right? And I, which I don't, I can't give you a rundown on what makes someone an Uncle Tom. I can't give you um, a rundown that what makes someone um, a sellout, um, but what I can tell you is that as us as black people, it is extremely racist to me to use other black people that is already employed as the gatekeepers of the company when other or when new other black people are coming to the companies, you know, as to use them as the measure of the marker to say, oh, if you like them, then we'll like them because we like you. Fuck you. That's palatable. That's respectability politics. And because that person you feel like you bond to, or maybe you like them, and I don't, maybe y'all just bond and that's fine. But to use them in a way to kind of, kind of, to, to use them in a way to exclude other black people is dirty. And then we're quite aware that a lot of black people will get on these jobs and they're coming, they're singing, dance, and they'll be so willing to talk about the next black person and go against them to try to get ahead. We're quite aware of that. You know, I've been in situations where I've seen that done. You know, I go into the office and talk to my manager. We talk about our shit. It usually wraps up until a half an hour, right? But then there's always that other employee. You're like, damn, an hour and a half every man? Like, damn, y'all really, what y'all talking about? But then you start to see that that same employee is moving up. That same employee is playing the game. Nothing to do with work because their work is usually not all that good, right? But what they do come to work is they come in shucking and jiving. They come in willing to tell you everything that they did this past weekend. They come in, um, they're really open and they're looking for friends. And again, all of this is fine, but you respect them. You like them, so it's okay. So any mediocrity is going to be overlooked because they just fit the culture. Those those keywords that sometimes can be thrown off. I'm thrown off by it a little bit. Sometimes I have to sit back and be like, okay, so what do they mean by that? Rightfully so, because we're used to the code language. We're used to that. We're used to that. We're, we're so used to... Um, you know, the goalposts being moved. We're so used to being in situations where it looks like as though it looks very whitish. We're so used to that. So when we hear things like, you know, we make sure they fit our culture, we are going to immediately tense up because we don't know what that means. You're right. We don't know what that means. And unless you define it in a way that makes sense to us, we're going to always kind of be worried. It's like, oh, am I the black that you accept? Am I the black that you want to be around? <laughs> We're going to always think that that means that because it's so vague. You know what I mean? It's so vague. And when you really sit back and think about it and you, and, and let's say a manager decides that, oh, I don't want to, I don't think this person fits the culture. What exactly does that detail? Um, because I'm pretty sure it has a lot to do with the fact that as black people and white people, we just innately just have some differences in how we carry ourselves and all that other stuff. And so with those differences, I wonder when someone says, don't fit the culture, what that means. You know what I'm saying? Like I've had a manager one time, um, I was having some, again, cause I'm uncomfortable. I think it was at Tufts University. And I was um, at the time on some FMLA uh, for some health reasons. So I had some flexibility um, with my being able to come to work and all the other stuff. And I remember her saying, um, we were talking, um, and I think sometimes we're talking about vacations. We were just talking about sharing of information. 
I made it clear to say I'm a very private person. So when I go through things, it's not something that I, 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 I it's not going to be a big announcement. I don't make things, a, 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 I don't make things like that known. That's my public, um, that's my, that's my private information. I think her answer was to me, well, that's just not the, um, that's just not the tough way. You know, we're very sharing here. We tell each other, you know, that's not what the community likes. The community likes for people to, you know, really just tell what's going on with them. They like to feel like they're a part of your life. No, I like to feel like I like my check and I like it on every Friday. And I like to tell you what the hell I want to tell you. And that has nothing to do with work. So when you say someone doesn't fit the culture, what exactly does it mean? Because I've been in those same type of work situation and an Asian person will come to work. They come to work, they do their job, and they're quiet. They ain't telling us all their business, and they go the fuck home. So when you tell me that this doesn't fit the culture, what the fuck are you really saying? That I'm not making you comfortable with my presence? That's how that registers to us. If I'm lying, I'm flying. That's how that registered to us. That someone is not acceptable or, uh, for you based on some bullshit. That's how that sounds a lot of times. And I know to say that it's that that means this across the board all the time. But what I am saying is that these are the trigger words and code languages that people use, like in housing, you know, income. Income is used to discriminate. Don't fit the culture is used to discriminate. Because what the fuck does she mean? I had to be more open with my private information. What does she mean by that? That doesn't fit the how are you gonna tell me I don't fit the I don't know that I don't know what's going on with the next person in the other room or when they go on vacation or what's going on when they're not at work I don't know any of that shit but I'm not bothered by that these these those little things that we're talking about and that I'm more than comfortable in sharing my experience because we got to talk about these things so yeah so let's talk about it what do you, what do you mean don't fit the culture and again I want to preference this by saying um, and I don't think I should have to say it, right? Because we're being honest about real conversations. I said that that happened at, I've had an experience at Tufts, but it wasn't my only experience. So I'm 30 something years old. I've had multiple experiences. You can't narrow it down to one person and da, da, da. Like I'm talking across the board about my life or things that friends may have shared to me. And I now get to interpret it and, and give it to you guys and, and, and give you some context behind it. You get what I'm saying? And that's just generally what I do in general, right? It's not my story to tell, so I'll never be like, well, my friend told me when she works at... No, but what I will tell you is that these are conversations we're having in our private about these microaggressions, and I can just tell you that I'm not in the minority of feeling these ways, and I'm just not in the minority of feeling them, and it's just period, point blank. Um, what else do I want to say? I also want to say to... Um, some of my people in my community, you guys get so offended by people saying shit. And you know what? I I'll say this. I uh, some people in my community will feel like they have a very just thankful spirit. And there's nothing wrong or be humble type of spirit. But understand what you feel like you have to accept. It's not what everyone else feels like they have to accept, right? You may just be grateful for being in the room. That's not everybody's. That's not everybody. <laughs> no, 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 no. We said we want to seat at the table. That's different. I can't relate. We different. I can't relate to that. I want to be heard. I want to be respected. I want to be valued. I want my opinions to be valued. So no, I'm not okay with just being in the room. Well, and why should anybody? You shouldn't be. I would encourage that for yourself. But you have to see more for yourself and want more for yourself and understand your power or see worth in you for being in that room. Because that just tells me you don't value yourself as much as you should. If you really feel that you're at your best at playing small and not speaking up and, and not making your presence known, that's a you problem, baby. And don't you come around here trying to put that shit on me. <laughs> I'm just being completely honest. I don't. I love this. I love this. I got some shit to fix. But what you won't do is make me feel like I'm any less than anybody else. <laughs> Even with my spelling errors. <laughs> because let me tell you, if Mr. Tart and them didn't catch it all like that, it ain't no motherfucking problem. <laughs> all right, I'm just being funny, y'all. And cheeky. I can be that way. <laughs> all right, yeah, y'all be blessed. Y'all be black. And y'all be back. And I'm probably going to do a longer extended, like, YouTube situation about the same topic. 
But, you know, I'm just really getting back in the swing of being on social media and really, like, not trying to do the Facebook thing at all. Okay. <laughs> and just really just, like, use the other social media sites that I feel like will help grow what I'm trying to do, the I'm Just Bougie show and channel. Um, so, yeah. That's why I'm out here. I'm out here in these IGTV streets. I'm out here in these YouTube TV streets. I'm just out here. So, I mean, take it what it is. If you like it, holla at your girl. <laughs> if you don't, holla at your girl. <laughs> no, don't holla. If, I mean, I mean, why would you keep coming back if you don't? Don't make no sense. All right, yes, y'all be blessed. Y'all be, y'all have a great day. Bye. You doing too much. I'm like, shut up. You ain't